next, your local news. Federal investigators try to find answers as to what caused the deadly plane crash in Minas, South Dakota. In my health feed, a medical breakthrough that could make angioplasty a thing of the past. In my crime beat, will law enforcement be ready to give breathalyzer tests when we hit 2,000? This and more next on KX4, your news channel. Harvest the savings at Smith Motors Fall Sale. Choose from their entire inventory of new and used cars and trucks, all sale priced. For example, get a new 99 GMC Sonoma pickup for $12,690. Choose from three new 99 Chev Luminas starting at $14,990. Or a new 2000 Chev Silverado regular cab pickup for $15,990. Trades welcome and on-the-spot financing to qualified buyers at Smith Motors, your genuine Chevrolet Olds Cadillac Pontiac Buick GMC dealer in Wapaton. You are watching KX4, your news channel. The news starts now. Investigators spend the day sifting through wreckage, hoping to shed more light on what happened before yesterday's deadly plane crash in South Dakota. Good evening. Federal investigators say it appears the plane carrying golfer Payne Stewart and five others was just about vertical when it hit the soft pasture land near Minas, South Dakota. In tonight's top story, the head of the National Transportation Safety Board says the plane went in fairly deep and sorting out the wreckage will be a challenge. The pieces are being removed slowly so as to not destroy any possible evidence. Most of the debris is embedded in mud and soil within the 10-foot deep, 30-foot wide crater. Tissue samples from the victim's remains have been removed from the crash site. They hope that the samples shed some light on whether there was a sudden loss of cabin pressure in the Lear jet. Meanwhile, the Pentagon says shooting down the runway Lear jet was never an issue because the plane was not headed toward a heavily populated area. For those who live near the crash site, it was too close for comfort. At, at 300 miles an hour, it was about 15 or 20 seconds from there. I'm, going, I'm glad he ran out of fuel and he did. Might have had him over here in the lake. Right. <laughs> or on top of the house. Right. In a related story, Fargo's Air National Guard unit will give investigators F-16 audio tapes that were recorded during the plane crash. Fargo fighters followed the off-course Lear jet. Commander Colonel Lyle Onvig says there is videotape, but the camera has a very narrow field of view, and the tape does not have any footage of Stewart's ill-fated jet. Manitoba Premier Gary Dewar was in Washington today to urge Congress to vote against two major North Dakota water projects, the Garrison Diversion Plan and a Devil's Lake outlet. Canada is worried that the projects will pollute its water. The Premier said he met with Minnesota congressmen and plans to meet with the North Dakota delegation. Although as good neighbors, uh, we, sh we believe strongly and passionately uh, that um, irreversible damage to our ecosystem, our water system, will have real negative impact on the fisheries in Canada uh, and the uh, tourism industry in our province and, and our country, and that we've got to be able to find uh, more acceptable solutions to both countries rather than unilateral action. North Dakota Senators Kent Conrad and Byron Dorgan say they're puzzled by Manitoba's ejections. Meanwhile, Minnesota is on record opposing both Garrison and the Devil's Lake Project. In news from around the region tonight, a long prairie Minnesota woman whose daughters were found floating in a central Minnesota lake is charged with murder and attempted murder. 28-year-old Lisa Patchen is accused of deliberately driving her car into a lake and leaving her two daughters in the car while she swam to shore. A 6-year-old died. A 7-year-old is in critical condition. Relatives say Patchen has a history of emotional problems. Sarah Jane Olson is asking for money. Olson says she cannot afford to defend herself against charges she tried to blow up a police car as a member of the SLA in 1975. Olson, formerly known as Kathleen Celaya, says her January trial will cost her about $700,000. A Minnesota doctor will spend 10 days in jail for a case of road rage. Dr. Thomas Valente pleaded guilty to slapping an elderly woman after she cut him off on a highway ramp. Breaking news tonight out of South Dakota, highway patrol troopers and other law enforcement have been sent to Plankinton, South Dakota, in what the governor's office is calling a disturbance at the juvenile prison for boys. Governor Bill Janklow says a juvenile male released seven other juvenile males from their cells in one of the enclosed pods and that some minor damage has been reported. The governor says the highway patrol SWAT team has been called in. A spokesperson says no one has been injured, there are no hostages, none of the juveniles is armed. That juvenile prison is a maximum security unit. Turning to the weather now, meteorologist Dave Hovde is in of tonight's first look, and we hear there's some good news ahead. Is that right, Dave? 
Good news if you want one more day of the same, at least one more day of the same. We'll tell you just how long this could last. Looks like tomorrow a little breezy, but temperatures should be close to 60 degrees. Dickinson had 71 today. Wow, let's take a look at that first look at the forecast tonight. 36, mostly clear sky. Conditions have changed a little bit. South winds at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Temperatures still holding in the 40s right now. And we'll see what that long-term forecast holds insofar as possibilities for snow. Is there or isn't there? Answers coming up. Thanks, Dave. A Moorhead resident says he was followed by a pickup late this afternoon and someone inside the pickup displayed a handgun and possibly fired the handgun outside. A police report was filed about a half hour after the incident, which is said to have occurred near the intersection of 11th Street and 20th Avenue South. No one was injured. The pickup is described as a dark green Ford Explorer and is believed to have had two people inside. Historically, police have their hands full on New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day with drunk drivers. And the rollover into the new century also means many breathalyzer machines won't work properly. On January 1st, many will read out the wrong date, thanks to the Y2K bug. Are local authorities ready and have changes been made? The answer's in tonight's Crime Beat 4 report. You've had too much to drink and made the mistake of trying to drive. A police officer pulls you over and you struggle as he runs you through the paces. Later, you wind up at the police station blowing into a breath alcohol machine. The printout will include a time and date of the testing, and the results will be used as evidence if the case winds up in court. When the new year arrives, don't expect the Y2K bug to bail you out of trouble. There are about 65 machines currently in use across North Dakota, just like this one in Fargo. And the manufacturers say they are Y2K compliant. The final results of the tests are based on the lowest of the two tests that the subject, uh, of the two samples that the subject provides for us. That's not to say there won't be problems, but North Dakota's toxicologist has instructed police departments to write in the time and date if there's a misprint. As long as the officer notes that, uh, the test is still accepted as, as uh, valid. You don't think any defense attorneys will be chomping at the bit? Oh, I'm, I'm sure they will, as, with the, as they do with anything. Bottom line, it's going to be tough to get out of a DUI if there's a problem with the machine, and that's the same for law enforcement in Minnesota. By the way, North Dakota is upgrading and replacing the current breath test machines. It's hoped that the major cities like Fargo and Grand Forks will have new ones around the first of the year. A semi hits a school bus full of students. We'll have the details when we go across America. Then on my health feed, how the same treatment that uses light to kill cancer cells may help with another common condition. Plus, Bruce Asbury shows you a rather, rather unique kind of display. Meanwhile, meteorologist Dave Hubby returns. He'll be back with your forecast. when you get your Big Sky Frequency card by November 8th. You are watching KX4, your news channel. In news from across America tonight, a semi crashed into two school buses this morning in Indiana, injuring 70 people, mostly students. The buses were stopped at a railroad crossing when the semi hit one bus, pushing it into the other. Three people were seriously injured. The rest were mostly bumps and bruises. Well-known singer, songwriter, and actor Hoyt Axton is dead. Axton, who was 61, died in his sleep overnight. He had suffered a heart attack two weeks ago, a stroke in 1996. Some of Axton's 220 published songs include Three Dog Nights, Joy to the World. 
Axton's acting career included a role in the movie Gremlins. La Nina is back, but will she bring us this winter? What will she bring us? The ocean phenomenon is expected to bring a rough winter to the Pacific Northwest, the Great Lakes region, and the Northeast with more snow and rain than usual. That's the government's prediction anyway. It'll be warmer and drier than usual in the South. El Nino, La Nina. What, what does will it mean, it mean for, for us? us? <laughs> yeah, and you know, last year we had a La Nina event as well, and uh, we've had El Nino and then two La Ninas. And last year really wasn't that spectacular, really. And uh, so even though the folks from the National Weather Service think we should expect real big swings in the weather this winter, I don't know. I, I think the effects are less pronounced in the central section of the country, but a uh, El Nino or La Nina uh, effect does really make winters rather supercharged that set up the flooding in 1996. So we'll be watching this winter rather closely, and I'll have a special report on La Nina, and I'll let you know what our forecast is in more detail coming up in November. All right. All right. So let's get into things. Quick look at the forecast tonight. Is going to mention the clear skies, and then we should start off mostly sunny tomorrow as well. So 36 tonight, 43 tomorrow morning. Not a bad first quick look at the weather. I mean, this time of year, you can face a lot worse. I can remember going trick-or-treating in Fargo with snow on the ground. 41 in Aberdeen, 38 in International Falls, 35 in Duluth, 50 in Bismarck, 59 in Minot right now. Doppler radar is clear. Let's take a look outside. And we caught a nice sunset here in Fargo. Look at this thing. Great. Had a lot of folks commenting on just how nice the sunset was tonight. Sometimes those clouds do help to just irradiate the sky a little bit. Glance off the sun. 50 right now. Southeast winds at 12 and pressure 29.98 and steady. Dew points just 26. Grand Forks, East Grand Forks. The other end of the day, sun up 45. Dew point 26. Southeast winds 8 to 21 and the pressure is falling. WeatherNet tonight, our featured site is the new site, East Grand Forks Senior High School, 45 the current temperature, southwest winds at 2, daytime I-57, wind gusts to 16 miles an hour today. Well, let's take a look at the day planner for tomorrow. And tomorrow's day plan, I'm going to mention some pretty breezy winds, northwest of 15 to 25, sunny to start, partly cloudy, we're going to see a mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon, 58, and then in the evening, expecting things to clear off again and get rather cool. Evening temperatures should be somewhere in the 40s or even in the 30s by 10 or 11 o'clock at night. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the cloud cover picture. Clouds streaming in from the north and the west, but just some dry air, a little dry slot in the backside of that tonight, so that's what's made things clear. Well, there's some showers out in Portland and Seattle, and as you head towards Boise, in the Front Range and some of the northern Rockies, it actually turns into snow. Haven't quite gotten to Billings yet, and uh, we're going to be watching the development of that player in the weather coming up this week. Denver's okay, and high clouds earlier today for the Fargo-Moorhead area, and currently it's clear. But up in the north, parts of northern Minnesota, North Dakota, still facing some of these clouds, and that could trap in a little bit, but a little bit more heat tonight. 49 for Chicago and 61 in Memphis at this hour, 45 in Buffalo, 54 Salt Lake City, and 76 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, we do have some high pressure in control right now, so it kept the forecast today fairly dry. And tomorrow, the difference between that and nearby areas of low pressure is going to lead to breezy conditions and northwest winds, especially in the afternoon, might slacken off a little bit overnight, especially in the late evening hours, we'll see winds decrease. And you have to go well north of Lake Winnipeg, in fact, closer to Hudson's Bay, to find any snow tomorrow from the weather systems. Let's take a look at the satellite picture once again. Again, we see quite a bit of cloud cover still to the north, but it is retreating that direction. The future cast pretty short tonight. There was a fire at the Unisys building out on the east coast that provides some of the model information, so we can't go too far with this. We get in through Wednesday, and we should see a mix of clouds and sunshine even through later Wednesday. The forecast looks pretty dry. 36 for Fargo tonight, 34 Grand Forks, 32 in Bemidji, 58 for Fargo Moorhead tomorrow, 55 in Grand Forks. Don't be surprised if some folks get close to 60 and not maybe even to the lower 60s tomorrow. If the sunshine stays a predominant player, mostly clear. South winds 10 to 15 tonight and partly to mostly sunny and breezy tomorrow with northwest winds 15 to 25. All righty, five-day forecast. Breezy tomorrow, sunny Thursday. But after the cold front slides through, it'll be a little bit cooler. Not bad. Keep it coming. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> the same treatment that uses light to kill cancer cells may help with another common condition. Find out what it is next on My Health Beat.
a Mercury Grand Marquis. With its roomy interior, vacation-sized trunk, a powerful V8, plus the government's highest crash test rating, five stars. Right now, save with low 0.9% APR limited term financing, plus $500 cash back on the luxurious Grand Marquis. So get to your Mercury dealer now. It's the greatest, the greatest mattress sale of them all on the greatest names in the history of sleep. Great savings on every Sealy Posturepedic, Crown Jewel, Stearns and Foster, every Simmons Beauty Rest, and Back Care. It's a sale so great, you could own a Sealy Posturepedic or Simmons Beauty Rest Queen Set for as little as $2.77. Plus, you always get our 120-night comfort guarantee. Don't miss the greatest mattress sale of them all. Now through Monday at Slumberland Furniture. Hey, is this great or what? We process oranges and cocoa in Brazil, blend and distribute animal feeds on five continents, export North American grain to hungry markets around the world, and produce fertilizers in Saskatchewan and Florida, where our neighbors are flocking to their new home. Cargill. It's not just what we do, it's how we do it. can be heroes. Get me up, get! My goofy older brother, that's who. I say, what about Florence Nightingale? And that Queen Elizabeth person we read about in class. They were heroes, just like Queen Amidala. There she comes. She's gonna get a lot of candy this year. Let's follow her. Take off for Big Kmart, where all your favorite Star Wars costumes are on sale. The Red River Health Promotion Coalition brings you Health Beat 4 with Michelle Turnberg. A common cause of heart disease is plaque buildup in the arteries. Procedures such as angioplasty can remove the plaque, but if the vessels are damaged in the process, plaque will return. A new procedure may get rid of the plaque and eliminate the chance of it coming back. Look at a flower. 62-year-old Bernie Bologna loves his daily walks, alone flowers. or with his wife, Roseanne. No, the blue. The more I can walk, the better I feel. But when plaque buildup in his arteries affected circulation in his legs, Bernie out. nearly had to give up walking. He turned to doctors Stan Roxon and Mahmoud Razavi for help. They say the same light-activated drug that's used to selectively attack cancer cells may also open up clogged arteries. It kills some of the cells that are in the plaque and these cells are initially responsible or partially responsible for the buildup of the plaque. Traditionally, doctors use angioplasty to push away plaque and widen the artery. Plaque often returns in a process called restenosis. Doctors say the new procedure eliminates that. In this uh, approach, there's no opportunity for restenosis because we do not injure the underlying vessel. The drug is injected and selectively absorbed by the plaque. The next day, a bright light activates the drug to dissolve the plaque. Thus far, it seems to be upholding its promise to both cause regression of plaque and not cause injury to underlying blood vessels. It let Bernie keep moving. About 30 days after the procedure, I started to notice that I was walking for an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, no pain. Now Bernie says walking is pure joy. Patients go home the same day the procedure is done. The regression of the plaque happens gradually. So far, no serious side effects have been seen. Doctors expect if clinical trials continue to go well, the procedure will be FDA approved within five years. Fans hoping to see the Minnesota Gopher men's basketball to play during March Madness will have to wait. David will tell you why later in sports. But first, it's only available in North Dakota and we'll give you a preview of this gigantic exhibit next on KX4 your news channel. Jeep Cherokee, the role model for four-wheeled vehicles great and small. Lease a new Cherokee Sport at your Jeep dealer for just $279 a month and get all this at no extra charge. Something big is terrorizing towns all across America. Hardy's Monster Burger. 
two beef patties, three slices of cheese, and four strips of bacon. We got a situation here. I need tanks, artillery, tear gas. Stop, it's just a burger. It can't hurt anybody. Good point. And it's not alone. Hardy's monster roast beef. Lots of cheese, bacon, and roast beef piled real high. The monster burger and monster roast beef only at Hardy's. No matter what you'll need this winter, you'll probably find it in Mills Fleet Farms Winter Catalog. I need that. You'll find everything. Snow throwers, ice augers. I need that too. Snow tires, insulation, Sorel boots, coats. There's something I really need. Pizza ovens, Nesco roasters, and more. Oh, there's something else I need. Hey, honey, come here and try this. The Mills Fleet Farm Winter Catalog. Everything you need and more. Hey, that's something we need. You really love this stuff, huh? Loathe. We loathe. You're taking it off the market. Why? Remember those Sunday dinners at Grandma's? Yeah. Oven baked chicken. Her special sauce. Yeah. Well, get over it. Now it's all here. Sauce, seasoning, rice. All you add is chicken. Does that start your bloomers? No. Dead. Damn it. Still top oven classics. Sunday taste, Tuesday effort. Slacker! Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. It's the only exhibit of its kind anywhere in the world, and it's right on our doorstep. Bruce Asbury hosts this trip to the savage ancient seas in Valley City. 30 mile an hour wind in Kansas. That's Mike Trebold, one of the best known paleontologists in the whole world. In the he lives in Valley but, City. Uh, and this is his exhibit, the only one of its kind in the whole world. And it's on display in Valley City for the next few days. There are 24 giant fossil skeletons and lots of other stuff dating back more than 70 million years, back when the northern plains was under about 900 feet of ocean water. And these were the denizens of the deep back then. It's the largest turtle that ever lived, living or extinct. Yeah, that's the Archelon, 17 feet wide from its left flipper to its right, and a shell that was 8 feet long. What really makes you sit up and take notice is the teeth on some of these sea creatures. They were mean. This is the largest mosasaur that's ever been found. Its skull is about 6 feet long. It has teeth the size of a T-Rex. It's 45 feet of bad boy. Not only do they have big serrated teeth along the upper and lower jaws, but they also have what are called pterygoid teeth. Right in here, you'll see they're very strongly curved in the middle of the palate, and they are going only one direction, down the throat. So whatever it could grab and get into its mouth and got it started going down the throat, there's no question where it was headed. This big fish, called the Zivactinus, was huge. They don't make them like this anymore. It's 12 and a half feet long. It could easily have swallowed a six-foot human. In fact, it regularly fed on other fish that were six feet long. This big exhibit, 10,000 square feet, called the Savage and Ancient Seas, will be in Valley City through November 8th. Then it'll go on the road to Chicago, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, and around the world to be displayed at some of the biggest and most important museums. So catch it while you can. Bruce Asbury, KX4, your news channel. Bet you there's a few anglers out there going, wouldn't that be great to have that on the end of the rod? Yeah, what is he talking about, 17-foot fins? It's like that commercial, you throw it in and, oh, look at what I have here. Yeah, that would be something. High school football tonight, and I'm glad that the weather has held off, because it's one of the last weekends in which they're actually playing outdoors on both ends of the border. And uh, we've got a bunch of high school football action coming up. It's my job, it's what I do. By the way, two college hockey polls were released today, and where was UND ranked in both? Dodge Ram's payload and towing capabilities are the stuff of legend. But there's a load more. Ram introduced the world's first quad cab. Ram's available Magnum V10 is the largest and most powerful V10 in a full-size pickup. And Ram pickups are the longest-lasting full-size pickups on the road. We could go on and on and on. Dodge Ram. Different. Asthma. It's striking more and more of our kids. 
In just 13 years, the number of children with asthma has more than doubled. Scientists know that global warming is real and heating up the planet. More heat means more smog, and smog can trigger asthma attacks for our kids. There are solutions. Find out what we can do to breathe easier about global warming. If you're looking for a nice community with great education and parks, definitely move to Moorhead. You and a guest can join me on my trip on a big tank full contest this winter from KX4 and your friends at Northwest Airlines. Four chances to visit four great cities. November 19th, we'll fly northwest to Memphis, home of the blues, birthplace of rock and roll. We'll tour Graceland, Sun Record Studios, and more, all put together by Kwame Travel. A trip on a big tank full contest, and you can win. Register for Bruce's trip on a big tank full at any participating Cellular One and authorized dealers and your area come-and-go convenience stores. I mean, they just played last week, but now they meet again, only this time it's the playoffs. Loser goes home. Fargo South hosting Grand Forks Central. Our game of the night, the Bruins' first drive capped off. Corey Greenheck from 12 yards out. That was pretty easy. South up 7-0. Knights would answer right back, however. Jared Olson's catch is hauled in by Bobby Risk. Missed the point after, however. 7-6. Fargo South at this point. 14-6 South at the half. Bruins open it up in the third quarter. Jason Fleet, 18 yards for the score. 28-6 at this point. 35-12. South wins it. The other AAA play-in game in North Dakota in Jamestown. The Blue Jays hosting Bismarck and Jamestown. Looks as if they're going to get a big return on the opening kickoff with Fumbo. And the Demons recover it. And they cash that in for a score. They get another turnover, cash that in for a score, 14 nothing at the half, but Blue Jay fans, it ends on a happy note, 15 unanswered, Jamestown, second time this year they beat Bismarck by a point, 15-14, and on the Minnesota side, Moorhead spuds at home, taking on Bemidji in 5A action, and Moorhead should not be losing to a 2-6 and team at home, and they made good on that deal in the first half, already up 7 nothing. Dave Kapp gets the number, and... Well, he had seven from seven yards out, 14 nothing. A bit later, Spuds go to the air. Jordan Taug launches the perfect strike to Adam Moore. Moore tackled at the seven. However, two plays later, Ryan Anderson. He'll barrel in from the three. Touchdown, Moorhead. High-scoring affair, 48 to 28, the Spuds. And a final football note, courtesy of our Sight on Sound Vikings update. Carrington's own Jim Kleinsasser says he'll probably need surgery on his right shoulder because he has a torn rotator cuff. However, the rookie tight end then adds he expects to be ready to play this weekend against Denver. Vikes two and a half point favorites in that game. And on the Gophers basketball scene, the academic scandal has gotten to the point where the school is penalizing itself. I'm announcing that the university will self-impose the following sanctions on the men's basketball program. First, the university will impose a one-year ban on postseason play, including the National Invitational Tournament and the NCAA Tournament. And that still may not be good enough to appease the NCAA, which can still slap any additional penalties on the Gophers that they desire. And this Tuesday night at 10, most likely our final hunting guide of the season. You'll want to grab a pen and paper for some phone numbers coming up. But first, in Minnesota, turkey hunters will have more opportunities on 538 acres of land thanks to a $36,000 land donation for three parcels that in Scott, Rock, and Stearns counties. Two pieces of federal legislation, both relating to fur bear and trapping. They were defeated in this Congress, but Congress has adjourned until January of 2000. That's an election year, and anything and everything comes up for a vote once again. So if you want your voice heard for this or other federal issues, for or against, you can contact a representative, 1-800-562-6000. That's 1-800-562-6000. That's a handy number to have. And finally, Pheasants Forever taking landowner habitat requests. And for more information, you can call Mark at 701-282-7765. That's 701-282-7765. Tonight's Sports 4 Rocks with Classic Rock. 1079 The Fox. On this day, in 1965, the Queen of England honor the Beatles with the member of the Order of the British Empire Award. I guess that officially made them Brits.
Here's Get Back. And Jim Gray did not. He didn't apologize. apologize to Pete Rose, just to the fans. And Bud Selig came out today and said, as long as I'm commissioner, Pete Rose will never get back in baseball. Okay. All right. Thanks, David. Here's tonight's Cash Craner. and Mercury Mountaineer with a powerful V8 and all-wheel drive. Now you can lease a loaded Mountaineer for only $3.59 a month with just $9.99 cash due at signing. Mercury Mountaineer. At your Mercury dealer now. Get a grip on big savings at Menard. Maximize space with the TV wall arm from Orbital Holdings. This model holds up to a 20-inch TV on sale $34.95. These models hold up to a 27-inch TV $44.96. Carpenter's wood glue from Elmer's dries extra strong. 16 ounces, $1.99. Exterior wood glue is weather resistant. 16 ounces, $2.49. Get stuck on saving at Menards. Save big money at Menards. <laughs> Is a room somewhere far away from the cold night air with one enormous chair on wall and it be lovely. At Lazy Boy, we make rooms full of lovely furniture, including America's favorite recliner. Loverly. Hurry into Conlin's furniture for a wide selection of Lazy Boy home furnishings. Go with the green to your John Deere dealer. He's running a special inspection for your equipment now. He'll check for oil leaks, head gaskets, pump timing, fan pulleys, up to 90 items on tractors alone, and the same for combines and all major equipment. Avoid downtime later. Come in now for John Deere's service. Good deal. See your network John Deere dealer. Closed captioning on KX4 is brought to you by the Occupational Development Center, a vocational training center. See them for all of your manufacturing and employment needs. Talk about your community service projects and by fifth grade Boy Scouts. Yeah, the troop from Thief River Falls presented two checks for the town's new police dog. The boys sold popcorn to raise money so a bulletproof vest and patrol harness could be bought for Magnum. The troop's leader, Sandy Dahl, came up with the idea after hearing about a similar donation that paid for a patrol dog vest in Moorhead. Moorhead's canine officer, Mike Detloff, was on hand tonight to answer questions and show the boys how this, his dog vest works. The Boy Scouts were invited back to the law enforcement center when Magnum's vest arrives. What a great effort. Excellent good effort. Good for them. What's coming up in the weather? Tomorrow looks pretty good, but breezy. Northwest winds, 15 to 25. Daytime high, 58. All right. In sports, sir. Well, Wednesday's a bison day, so I guess I'll go to NDSU. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Letterman is next. We'll see you tomorrow. For martial law.